Fandom and theories go together like Stan Lee and tinted glasses. Like Captain America and his mighty shield. Like Mjolnir and judging people's worthiness. Like theories and videos about theories. Not all theories can be true, and some are non-starters once the logistics are worked out. But getting things right is only part of the fun of fan theories. The other part is finding new ways to look at a franchise you enjoy, or contemplating a different way a story could have gone. Let's look at a fun and sentimental take on Steve Rogers' journey, and how he might have shared it with the legendary Stanley this whole time. There were all kinds of endings for Earth's Mightiest Heroes when nearly the entirety of the Marvel Cinematic Universe walked through portals to get some payback on the Mad Titan Thanos. There were some sad endings like Tony Stark and Natasha Romanoff. There were some bittersweet endings for the Avengers like Hawkeye and Thor. Perhaps one of the most heartwarming endings, however, was the one reserved for the ever-faithful Captain America. The World War II hero was displaced from his own time. Separated by decades from that dance with the love of his life, Peggy Carter, and Steve Rogers was always doomed to never get the life he left behind back. That was until a very convenient rat kicked the quantum tunnel and spit Scott Lang out with the key to tripping through time. The first priorities, of course, were to bring back the people snapped out of existence. But with that job done, Steve Rogers took the opportunity to get that dance with Peggy Carter after returning the stones and Mjolnir from the time they got them, then traveling back to our time the old-fashioned way to give up his shield to Sam Wilson. In that scene, we got an aged-up Chris Evans. But Redditor Mem the Durgan has proposed an alternative casting that would also shed some light on one of the most consistent things about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that being the repeated appearance of a particular mustachioed man in different roles in every movie. That person, of course, is Stan the Man Lee, creator of many of the iconic characters that make up the Marvel Universe. Mem the Durkin suggests that instead of an aged-up Chris Evans portraying the now age-appropriate Steve Rogers, Old Man Captain America was instead intended for Stan Lee himself. And in fact, all those Stan Lee cameos were Steve Rogers using the Quantum GPS, Infinity Stones, and Pym Particles to check in on his former team throughout the Infinity Saga. It's a heartwarming thought and fitting tribute to the man who created this universe of legends. Only there's a hitch. Principal photography for Avengers Endgame ended months before we lost Stan Lee, and it was reported that Stan Lee's cameo had been filmed even earlier than that to give the 95-year-old legend the time to rest. Which means that if this really was their intent, they could have done it. Okay, so the theory doesn't hold up as something that was intended, but prevented by Stanley's death. It's still a charming idea, and not one without a degree of precedent in the comics themselves. Let's look how it would have shaped up had that been the plan. This theory shares a lot with another fan theory that was partially confirmed by James Gunn in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, that Stanley was working with, or in fact was, Uatu the Watcher, a member of an ancient and powerful race of space beings with giant heads and purple robes who observe all the known universes. Uatu watches Earth, and while he has been known to step out of the grandstands and participate in events despite that being against the Watcher's rules, his primary role was to introduce readers to alternate storylines for Marvel's popular What If title that will become an animated series in 2021. In Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, Stan Lee was debriefing a group of Watchers about the different roles he's had in his numerous cameos. There's an error in that particular scene that Guardians director James Gunn admits to that this theory would actually correct and one of the first big elements the Stan Lee Steve Rogers idea could fix. In the Guardians cameo, Lee refers to a time that he was a FedEx man, a nod to when Stan Lee delivered Steve Rogers' phone at the end of Captain America's Civil War to Tony Stark. The problem is the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 takes place in 2014, immediately after the first Guardians of the Galaxy and two years before Captain America Civil War. But if the Stan Lee slash Steve Rogers is using Pym Particles and the Space Stone to trip through time and space to check in on his old space-bound allies, he could also be doing that out of order. Steve was supposed to return the Space Stone to 1970, but in 1970 the Space Stone was still in the Tesseract. That means that returning it to its original state was going to be trickier than the others. Well, maybe not trickier than having to return the Soul Stone to his first foe and the man who sent him to ice in World War II, the Red Skull. That had to be awkward for everyone. Probably pretty satisfying to tell Red Skull that he wasn't free of his curse, though. Going back to Captain America Civil War, this would also mean that Steve Rogers is hand-delivering the cell phone Tony could use to call him without Tony Stark knowing it. He even gets a nice final dig on his old estranged friend when it comes in looking for a Tony Stank. It's the playful back and forth we've seen in Tony and Steve's best of times during one of their darkest times as friends. That's not the only sentimental stop on the tour through time and space that would indicate that old man Rogers, as portrayed by Stan Lee, would have made. All the way back in World War II when Bucky was an all-season soldier for the US and Peggy was working for the OSS before it was evolved into S.H.I.E.L.D., Steve Rogers' abilities were being used to sell war bonds. 
To pretty much everyone except Colonel Chester Phillips, this was a tragic waste of Rogers' abilities. Rogers got to prove that by taking his USO act into battle to rescue Bucky's unit from a Hydra facility. For his efforts, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. But the duty-bound Rogers had better things to do than get medals, and instead of showing up for this ceremony, he joined the fight against the Axis power and Hydra. In the audience at the ceremony is Stanley in a military uniform, expressing disappointment at the height of the person who wasn't Steve Rogers. If the theory had been true, this would have been Steve Rogers stripping through time to show up at a his medal ceremony after all. After saving half the universe and helping to beat Thanos, <laughs> he earned it. This would mean that it would also happen side by side with another time that Stan Lee turned up in a World War II uniform for a cameo. At the beginning of Avengers Age of Ultron, there's an after party for the team celebrating the destruction of Hydra and the return of Loki's scepter after Revlo and his Hydra cohorts took it from S.H.I.E.L.D. custody at the end of the first Avengers movie. Old Man Rogers, played by Lee, would be playing a role close to his own story as a World War II vet. Merm the Durgan suggests that the Stan Lee Old Man Rogers might have a bit of fun with the fledging Avengers when he was asked about the prospect of a superhero team in New York during the closing moments of the first Avengers movie. Of course, even without this theory, Stan Lee's comment is a bit of a nod and a wink as Stan Lee said most of his creations in the city he loved, New York City. But there's an in-movie reason for the old man Rogers to scoff at the idea of superheroes in New York, even though his younger self was one of them. At the end of Avengers Age of Ultron, the team makes the realization that putting the headquarters of a team of superheroes in the middle of one of the most densely populated cities in the United States wasn't the best idea, and the Avengers move to a more remote location in upstate New York. This sly comment could have been a hint to the team to scout out some new locations. While the impending events that led up to Infinity War were pretty grim, Old Man Rogers had one last opportunity to have a little fun. With all he's seen both as an Avenger and as the space-time skipping retired Avenger, seeing spaceships would not be that big of a deal, which would be reflected in Stan Lee's Infinity War cameo as Peter Parker's bus driver chiding the kids about acting if they've never seen a spaceship. After the Battle of New York, an average New Yorker would probably not take even more spaceships so casually, but Old Man Rogers does living a truly full life after traveling through time and being in so many battles. There are a few cameos that become a little problematic for this theory, however. There are two of his Iron Man cameos where he plays versions of Larry King and Hugh Hefner. In the case of the Hugh Hefner cameo, there could be an argument that it's just a case of a mistaken identity, as Tony Stark is in full cocky Tony Stark mode, breezing by a woman who clearly thinks that Tony should remember her. This is less the case with the Larry King Stanley cameo, as he's introduced as part of the opening of Stark Expo. But since these are early on in the assembling of the Avengers, he might be trying impersonations as a way of keeping a low profile and not causing another splinter in reality. There are two cameos that would happen chronologically before those Iron Man cameos where this theory gets not only a little meta, but would also become a warm tribute to the world that Stan created and a nod to the storyline in the comics. For some superheroes, a day job is not much of a concern. Either they're full-time superheroing, or they're just super rich and that's how they got their superpowers in the first place. For those not lucky enough to be independently wealthy or have a benefactor that lets them superhero professionally, they need a day job. Sometimes these jobs can be handy in letting the hero know where the action might be, like a newspaper reporter, or take advantage of their proximity to the action like a news photographer. With Steve Rogers stepped out of time, he eventually had to start figuring out what life out of the suit would be. Plus, he had the regular requirements of making money for food and shelter. See, they're just like us, except they can deadlift a Buick. During the 70s, after the comic book Sharon Carter died in a riot, Steve Rogers had a bit of an existential crisis looking for some purpose in his life that didn't involve winging an indestructible shield at bad guys. That purpose, it turns out, was to become a commercial artist. Over the course of several issues, Rogers went from an advertising job to advertising job, looking for a little bit of that life-work superhero balance that would give him a reason to move on after Sharon Carter. Naturally, that involved meeting another special lady, this time Bernie Rosenthal. After a while, unable to find any satisfaction in the world of graphic design, snooze? He stumbles across some kids excited to read the comic book adventures of one Captain America. He becomes intrigued and goes into the newsstand to read a few issues of the comic book loosely based on his life and finds it both sensational and good wholesome fun. And if there's someone out there that likes wholesomeness, it's Captain America. So he heads on down to where else but Marvel Comics and gets a job drawing Captain America comics because naturally, they're his favorite. Pretty weird, right? In the comics, Captain America ended up drawing the Captain America comics that existed in the Captain America comics. It's like a portrait in a portrait painting another portrait. Mind blown. <laughs> what does this have to do with Stan Lee playing Old Man Rogers? Well, outside the appearance at World War II medal ceremony, the next two chronological appearances of Stan the Man are in the 70s, when he's yelling at army bases, and in the 90s, when he's memorizing lines. 
That makes both of these appearances unique as they are literally Stan Lee as Stan Lee. The tip-off in Endgame, where he drives by the army base, is the bumper sticker of his car, with one of Stan Lee's iconic sayings, Nuff said. That was how Lee would punctuate missives about his creations, sometimes followed by his other catchphrase, Excelsior! During the 90s set Captain Marvel, Danvers is on a bus looking at a runaway Skrull when she comes across Lee practicing lines for a movie. That movie is Kevin Smith's Mallrats, a movie where Stan Lee had an extended cameo as Stan Lee, was supposed to be appearing in the mall the movie takes place in. He ends up giving one of the main characters, Jason Lee's Brody, some superheroic advice. If the theory had been true, Stan Lee would have been playing a Steve Rogers who had become Stan Lee and written the comic books inspired by the real-world heroes of the MCU. While that couldn't include the rosters of heroes the world doesn't know yet, there are plenty not in the MCU yet that he could have written, as well as Captain America comics. Is the theory true? No, it's not. But it's still fun to think about the possibilities. And fun is what it's all about, right, Stan? Excelsior! That's how Old Man Rogers could have been played by Stan Lee, and in a way, could have become Stan Lee in the MCU. What do you think? Do you have any non-viable theories that are still fun to think about? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.